All about Symbian and Mobile Industry Review. So we're here at the Qt stand and this is one of the really important ones for developers. We're going to get the inside story on Qt. So let's go and take a look around the stand. I know we've got a couple of experts waiting for us. And we're just going to grab Daniel from, uh, from Qt. Hi Daniel, could you give us a quick introduction and tell us what you do at Qt? Okay, yeah, please, I would please do. Well, my name is Daniel Kilberg, and I'm responsible for the sales, marketing, and services on a worldwide basis. So I know that Qt is a very important thing for developers going forward, particularly in mobile. Can you give us a quick, round, quick look around the stand and give us a quick overview of what developers need to know? First thing they need to know is that with Qt you could write the code once and deploy it on many different uh, operating systems. And what I would like to show you first is here that we have some Symbian and Windows mobile devices where we have the same code base and it runs across the devices. Right, great, let's go and have a look. So this is an example on the um, Nokia Symbian device. We have the same code base also up on an HTC device which is with Windows mobile. And we also have it on a Sony Ericsson Windows mobile device. The same function running all across. We have uh, the Nokia N100, the memo device, and we also have the Nokia 5800 and the Samsung, one of the newer ones, and also Nokia N85. Well, come on. And we also have another HTC. All of them, the same code base. This is exactly the same code same running code. across yes. multiple platforms, multiple phones. Yes, indeed. That's really impressive stuff to see. So how can developers get into this? Where can they go to find out more? I think the first thing would be to go cute.nokia.com and go and download the code. And they can download the code, they can get the SDKs and the documentation there? Yes. I think another interesting thing is that the next step was happening with the integration of the, the Linux Moblin platform and the, the Memo platform with the new initiative with Migo. Uh, we will see the same code be able to run on other type of devices. And maybe I could just show you some other type of devices where Qt is already running. Yeah, let's go and see where uh, else Qt can be embedded on embedded devices and on the desktop as well, I believe. Let's go and take a look. One device we are having here is a photo frame, which is one typical use scenario for the Migo. Uh, we also have a Garmin navigation of the Nui phone. And uh, we also have, actually this is an older one, but it's just to show that we have history with devices. It's an old Sony Milo. They were old, also developed with Qt. And we have a recipe machine <laughs> where you could stand and cook, and it's actually safe for, for hot boiling oil. <laughs> so you could have it next to the stove. And we also have next to here, for example, a Skype phone. So we just focused on Skype and telephone calling. But I think maybe the most interesting part is still over in the other corner where we have like the new car industry and the printers. Let's go, go, let's go and take a look at that as well. Cute almost everywhere we can think it seems. Um, so we're still talking about Cute here, we're still talking about the same code and still on all these different devices. Yes. And another example where we're seeing for the future is that Cute seems to become a new standard in the uh, car industry. In the car industry, you're forcing more and more displays, and the new typical user scenario is that the children in the back seat also will have a display where they maybe would like to use the same things they have on the phone. And here we are demoing how the phone display is coming up, of a Nokia phone, is coming up on type of the display you have in the back seat of the car. And in this way, the children or the one who's sitting in the back seat could easily interact and be the same user you used with on your phone, but on the big screen in the car. Okay, we're over here looking at some of the other uh, QT powered appliances. Now behind us, I think we've got the home media center, is that right? Yes, I mean, one of the big areas where Qt is really growing is in the set-top boxes in the TV industry for all the new uh, internet-enabled TVs. An example we have over here is that how you easily could load and navigate and see actually maybe the future user interface of the mobile phone, but on the TV. So in this way, we're also learning from Qt of what comes in the future, and we could put this over and port it into the mobile phones. Okay, and here we're going to look at a Qt-powered printer, so going from the home entertainment centre right now into printed devices, big variation on appliances there. Well, this new printer from HP have a 
nice touch screen where you could scroll and you could directly connect with the internet and for example go on Google Maps or OV Maps and directly print it on the device. So and that's all powered by Qt, so instead of having to go onto your computer and connect to the internet, thanks to the power Qt you're able to access these websites and print them out directly on your HP printer without any computer interaction at all. Powered by Qt. That's brilliant stuff, great. We also have um, multiple devices from internet media players. We have Asus notebooks, which are using Qt, and then they basically are just taking forward different notebooks depending on different operating systems. But Qt is used behind all of the different operating systems. And a good example of how Qt is cross-platform even on a single device, so manufacturers can uh, provide consumer choice but still have a unified experience across them. Yes, and another good benefit for the manufacturers is that uh, Qt is chipset agnostic. That means that Qt is running in the same way across different types of the, um, chipsets. And we have tried out Qt with uh, the new NVIDIA, Tigra, we run it with um, ARM, with TI, with Freescale, with Sigma, or wh whatever. And the result is amazing. In, in, in another show here, we had seven different boards. And then the manufacturer could have the same code base and choose, pick the, the, the um, chipset which fits the price point. And in this way, you know, we could have three different devices, three different price points, but the same code base. And for those that don't know, that kind of hardware abstraction is almost unheard of in the mobile world, let alone general technology. To, to have a single code base that you can run across a whole variety of platforms, effectively abstracting the hardware so you don't have to worry about that, is a really significant achievement and cannot be underestimated. When it comes to IP, IP comms area and overall IP telephones with video functionality uh, and overall in IP enterprises, we are the clear number one in the industry. Basically, all leading players are using Qt for different types of devices. And this is really an important step for the unified messaging and bringing for the operators the fixed networks together with the wireless networks. And then having Qt on both these sides, as well as in the cars and in the home, means that you could have a very big application market opening up. That's great. Well, thank you for showing us all the large range of Qt devices. It's amazing to see how many different things it's running on. So I really appreciate you taking us around the stand. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more at All About Symbian at Mobile Industry Review.